unbelievable night the way things kicked off for you. You win your heat race, you come out, you grab the first ever Super Bowl, you sure looked like you were going to be the guy to beat. You get the whole shot in GP number one, and then a very small mistake ends up being disastrous for the night. Can you explain what happened in that moment? Um, from obviously things happened really quick. Uh, from what I could tell was it just had just a tiny little um, like line or, or ledge or whatever you want to call it in the angle I was coming in. I was just kind of set up for it, but it was so minimal and it, and it just grabbed my knobbies and things happened so fast and I couldn't. I tried to save it, but I couldn't. It was a bit of a bummer because I feel like it was set up to be a really good, really good moto, and unfortunately I had to throw it away. It was it was tough. You know, you couldn't really rely on anything out on the track because it was the, the berms were really flat like I think there's little things we can improve on to make it a little bit better for the riders but um, it made for some great racing like those guys said but in that in that case scenario obviously I watched the front end and, and went down and um, um, it was a bummer. And then you became incredibly determined put together three hard charges from the back the quad seemed to be the key for you getting up through the field how big of a send was it to hit that quad? Yeah, it was it was really not. It was huge. Um, wasn't really planning on it, but I saw Josh do it in uh, in my Super Pole lap. I wasn't quite as clean as I wanted to be in the beginning of the lap, and I just, it was like one of the rapid deci decisions that I made. Um, it really all came down to the triple before, and I hit it fairly clean, and just I knew it was just going to be wide open. Um, really difficult to overjump that. Uh, what made that really nice though was that it set me up nice for the turn because I didn't have to do that single into the turn and again with the potholes that there were and how slip, slippery it was and the berms being super flat, you, it, it, I could just kind of take my time a little bit and focus on that turn before the finish line a little bit better. Vince, we talked a lot about consistency, how it was going to be such a key to having a great night here tonight in Cardiff. And you put together one of the most consistent nights, maybe of your career, on one of the most difficult surfaces to race on. How were you able to do that? Yeah, um, three good starts, really. Um, sprinted really hard in those first two. And, um, yeah, that third one, I kind of just managed the podium, right? I, uh, I knew these guys were, were pretty quick all night, and um, I didn't really want to put up too much of a fight there for that. I just kind of secured the podium spot, and I, I was I had my eye on my teammate and a couple of those guys that were... Uh, close in points with me there, but um, yeah, got it done and um, couldn't be happier. And now you're in a position going forward to Melbourne where you are in great contention for the overall World Supercross Championship. Have you even thought about that yet? Uh, kind of just now, yeah, I guess it's, um, I guess Eli won't be there, right? No, <laughs> <laughs> Either way, whether he's there or not, you're in contention. <laughs> you're, you're still in contention. <laughs> Right. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, so Kenny and, and then me, but um, yeah, it, it's really cool to, um, to be in that spot, and then I've been told these guys, like, just cool to be up on the podium with these two guys, it's um, just awesome for me, and um, trying to inch my way closer to their level, um, got a little bit to go, but making some, some improvement. Eli, the incredible year that is 2022 for you continues, I said it on the broadcast earlier tonight, you're probably the only person in the world that's going to hate to see New Year's Eve because it means 2022 comes to an end. And it continues here tonight. Three GP races, three wins. Can you believe it unfolded that way? Well, to be honest, I started off a little bit slow. You know, it was like I was waking up and uh, Ken rode really good in that heat race and then in Super Bowl. I just never manned up for the quad uh, to be straight up. And that thing was that thing was big hawk. I'm like, nope, I'm staying with the, with the triple single for now and uh, ended up working out. Um, all three motos were a little bit different, you know, um, obviously got, you know, the gift from Ken in, in Moto 1 and then Moto 2 had to make a couple passes, but uh, I think the most technical thing of the night was that dirt. It was tough. Um, it, it was very hard pack. Uh, I almost fell actually in Moto 3 also um, near the mechanics area in that last left hander. So, um, but overall just enjoyed the, the whole, uh, the whole schedule, like in the, in the racing, um, Coming in here, I thought like the 8, 8, 12 was maybe going to be a little short, but it, that wasn't easy, you know, and it uh, obviously showcased some, some good racing, so um, had a lot of fun doing it. Let's talk a little bit about your overall experience with the World Supercross competition. You said earlier in the weekend when you were talking about whether or not you'd come back and do the 23 season that you wanted to see how the whole thing went, how it unfolded. 
What, did, what was your experience like here in Cardiff? What do you think of World Supercross? Well, it, it was real. You know, you know, there was, um, it was, it was, it was just a, a real Supercross. You know, uh, no, nothing was was second level with it. Um, it was all first class, and um, it was great to see. You know, the big crowd here. You know, that that was really cool to see that that stadium filled up. So, um, to be honest, I was I was looking at the stadium like this is a big stadium, but uh, I think we we filled it pretty well. Honestly. For how how quick things had to happen uh, for this series, it was a lot of work. So to get here was a big feat in itself. Um, this team's been really doing everything that they can. Everybody's been working together. Stuff changes daily. So um, to get here was a win for us. And to win, it's it's pretty crazy. Um, I was pretty surprised about it. My starts were absolutely horrible. Um, but just. Joy and I, we just celebrated five years, uh, our wedding anniversary last last week. So um, this is kind of a an anniversary trip type deal. So um, we're just we've had a good time getting to spend the week in in the UK and getting to uh, meet a lot of new people, have a bunch of new food, and dude, yesterday getting to practice um, was honestly really cool. Uh, I think it it really helped out with today. Today wasn't so long, but today moved pretty quick. So um, it was a lot of racing really intense racing. Um, it was honestly just, just such a blast being here. Uh, I mean, these, these European guys, they're not afraid to bang some bars. And so it was, uh, it was, it was quite a race out there, but dude, it, it was so much fun and uh, pretty surprised to come out on top. Yeah, you know, I raced this format in uh, 2019 at the OzX Open. Um, so I was a little familiar with it, but it's definitely uh, nothing changes. It's always chaotic and you gotta be on your game for three main events. and. You know, as you can see, uh, I think everyone up here, we all had at least one bad race. And, you know, it's trying to just eliminate those and, and recover in between the main events. And, you know what, being here, it's been a, an awesome opportunity. Very thankful. And, um, yeah, looking forward to the, the future of World Supercross and, yeah, the many more rounds that are going to come. Mitchell, as Chris pointed out, everybody had at least one bad race. Yours was quite painful as well. He got thrown hard to the ground. How are you feeling? Yeah, no, uh, uh, I'm good. Just uh, got to be smarter than that. It was a bonehead move on my part, and just put myself in a bad position off the off the jump. And uh, you know, the guys around me on the start flinched, and, and I fell for it. And uh, just yeah, came around bad. Was back in the chaos, and uh, yeah, just a bonehead move. And got to be smarter than that. But been really enjoying myself and having a lot of fun here this weekend. Uh, yeah, it was. It's been a blast from the get go, like these guys have said, and uh, really looking forward to Australia. Okay, let's open up questions.